Good morning. It's good to see you all this morning. Glad none of you blew away this this last week. Um, I'd like to open with a word of prayer. Lord, thank you that we're able to gather here this morning, all safe, all well. We pray for those who are not as fortunate as we are, who had damage and loss of life from the tornadoes. We pray that you will give them your comfort, strength, peace, courage, protection, and healing and help. And Lord, we pray that you will protect us from all that comes against us. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning again. Uh, our usual announcements on the back of the bulletin include uh, Boy Scouts tomorrow evening at 6.30, Tuesday evening at 6.30 is Cub Scouts, and Wednesday evening at 6.30 is United Methodist Youth Fellowship. Of course, coming up a little bit later uh, in July is Vacation Bible School and our 115th anniversary celebration. And you got anything to say there? Uh, oh, that's, that's a long time now. So, okay. And there's, there's a clipboard right there. Oh. Well, Donnelda, would you like to give us a, a very short 30 minutes uh, <laughs> briefing on your okay, week? Okay, this will be short. Um, annual conference was annual conference <laughs> I can't take the finance report and all of those things are too thrilling but it's, it is always a joy I think to hear people whose lives have been affected by the different ministries of um, the conference um, you know like the young people that are they have those independent living programs for kids who have aged out of the system but by providing them with this independent living situation they, they live their living quarters are furnished and their meals and all so they can continue to go to college I mean they still have to work but not like they would if they didn't have a place yeah. and that's that's real positive there's uh, some uh, different programs One's called an Arise, the Arise program. Uh, it's for people that have always felt the call to go into the ministry, but maybe you can't quit your job right now, you know, and do that full time. But there's a pro they've got a, a program for that now that they're starting. Uh, Seminary Life is a program at OCU. It's a theological program, but it's for laity people too. And it's like a 10 week thing that uh, you can go and take the courses. I don't know if they flunk you out of that or not. <laughs> I think if you pay your money, you can just go. Yeah. But, uh, one thing that I did find, and of course they are collecting things. I, I took our uh, Uncor deals that we had collected. And of course they're also collecting for the tornado bear. And during the conference on Wednesday afternoon, we all had uh, mission opportunities. You had to pick a long time ago what you wanted to do. But I think the bishop went with a group to more to, to pray with them and, and, you know, talk to them and that sort of thing. Um, I went to the food bank. That was okay. Okay. They, we took thousand, a thousand pound, pound bags of rice and pack them into little one pound bags to be distributed to the people. But we had a, a good group going to the food bank. We did like, uh, in three hours, we did like over a thousand pound, a thousand one pound bags. So, you know. Um, oh, what I was gonna tell you. Okay, sorry, I got kind of sidetracked. You know, not only is the Methodist Church helping out with current disasters, 
but they're still have they're still working on one in 2011 that happened south. I can't remember the name of the town down here where they had a tornado. Was that down in Alabama? No, no, no. South of, <coughs> of in southern Oklahoma. Oh, okay. And they're still helping with that. And then there was another town that had a big fire, the wildfires. <coughs> yeah. in, well, there was something in 2010, 2011, and the Methodist Church is still helping with the, what I was telling Kevin and Tanya. You know, I can see now from our involvement in this tornado thing, this is not a quick fix. No. You know, it's going to take a long time. So, But it, it was good. Very good. All right. Thanks a bunch. Do you want to have an announcement they'd like to add? Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to say the reason we're not having communion is because Chris is not here to bless the elements. Well, yeah, some of us know that. Well, I didn't know everybody. I'm sure not everybody knew. Yeah. Uh, there's some things I can do. There's some things I can't do. Anybody else like to add an announcement? Richard, uh, I don't know. Let me come up here so I don't have to. There you go. <laughs> uh, last Sunday after church, uh, a fire rescue truck drove up and visited with Richard and me, and and uh, they were on their way, of course, to uh, with their chainsaws to, to do some repair work and that sort of thing. And Steve Hood has given me his card here. They were looking for a Methodist church because he was Methodist, and I don't know if the whole crew was or not. But anyhow, his home church in um, Hackleburg, Alabama, was hit two years ago, and he says they're still re rebuilt. Uh, they had taken up donations, uh, had come up with $1,000, and they are going to send that thousand dollars to us for us to distribute because they said we would know, you know, better than they who needed help. And of course, you know, we had two families in, in this church uh, who, who did have damage. And so uh, the check did not come this week, but then he may not be home yet either. Uh, so um, Bob and Laverna are waiting for the, ch uh, the check and, and so probably if we get that this next week then we'll probably have a little short meeting after church uh, so that we can go ahead and get those funds <coughs> but um, I thought it was a very nice gesture on their part especially since they are so <coughs> and I don't know about the rest of you but I thank God that I live in Oklahoma I thank God that I live in the United States where people step up to the place. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Say something else. Our, uh, Michael Fisher, Foster, I'm right, is in Glenlax working with those people. He's been over there. He's on the chainsaw team. So we have him up there working hard today, and he has been for since he Okay. <laughs> it's one that you're not to do. Yes. <laughs> uh. I want to take Adam, our grandson Adam, his wife, and a friend from uh, up in Chicago came down last weekend to visit, and they all went out to the <coughs> park here. And I thought that was nice to come from Chicago. Yes. There's a lot of people coming from a long way. So. Any other announcements anybody would like to have? Has anybody had a birthday or celebrated an anniversary? Uh, next week. Our call to worship this morning will be found on page 154 of your hymnal, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
we affirm our, affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed that you'll find in your bulletin. Let us say what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the Son of the Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sent at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. They believed that any water that was moving, you know, like in a stream or a waterfall or something like that, that it was living because it wasn't, you know, still and not doing anything. So Jesus was talking to the people and he told them, he said, if you come to me, I will give you living water. Well, some of the people, they were right quite sure about that. The living water that he was talking about was that when we come to Jesus, he will help us get through everything, meet all of our needs. He will pour out his help over <coughs> us like water pouring out over us. And that was what he was calling living water. It sounds like it'd be water with a lot of wiggly things in it, doesn't it? But that's not the kind he was talking about. But, you know, here in Oklahoma the last couple of weeks, we've had lots of water. I mean, it's rained cats and dogs and everything else, and we've got floods, and yeah. It'd be funny to see cats and dogs coming out of the sky, wouldn't it? But still, the kind of water that we need the most is the love of Jesus that he pours out over us. And it helps us through everything in our lives. Let's say a little prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you pour out your love over us like living water, like water, filling us up and flowing from us. You give us more help and love than we need, and you want us to pass that on to others. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Mark the graces.
do we have any joys and concerns um, today? Any joys? I have a joy. Uh, I came out Tuesday and uh, I went back and looked at the library set. Oh, yeah. Uh, I found some pictures of the site. In fact, while we were building the new building, the life center, and so I said, we we'll give those to Ann. And I uh, found there was a lot of things. <laughs> so I may be calling on some of you to come up, move some stuff, and, and I kind of rearrange the stuff back there so that we can straighten it out. It just more or less looks junky. It's yeah, nothing major, yes. but, but it's, it's a little house. Well, that's good. Well, on that subject, if anybody has any pictures they'd like to put in the DVD that they would lend me, and I'll pan it and give it back to them, it'd be great. Okay. We have lots of pictures of them. That's what it's going to be all about. Okay. Did anybody hear that? She needs any pictures you have of anything of happening at the church in the past for the DVD? All of them. Well, I don't know. We already took care of that. <laughs> we had pictures of, of even a um, Halloween party that we had over the 50s some years back. And, mm -hmm. You know, things like that. Well, I tell you, it's a joy that we all came out all right this last round of storms. It finally spooked me out enough that I went to Mother's and got in her basement with everybody else. So. Yes, yes. It's like I remember when I was a kid, you know, it seemed like we spent all spring in somebody's cellar. And it seems like this month it's turning out like that again. I have another joy. I, I got to have a birthday party for a chance. We kind of got sidetracked with Memorial Day and all the storms and stuff, so we decided to have it to, after his birthday. But, and we invited the girls' group home and the boys' group home and we had a chance a uh, new home. And uh, they, they all had such a wonderful time. Oh, and that's great. Birthday cake. And, Ice cream and yes, we had little maracas that we shook and we just had a great time. It was, oh, that's it was a wonderful. great joy. It was so joyful. To see. Yeah, it's a happiness. Yes. Pastor Chris is a joy and a concern. Uh, he, his doctor says he is healing very well. He's still very uncomfortable and uh, still has to have his catheter and stuff like that for another week. As soon as he can get rid of that and get some more healing done, then they are going to do radiation uh, because there was more of the cancer than they had originally thought. They still think they got it all, but they want to make sure. So he said it will be, you know, a while before they get around to that because they want him to heal up really good. And right now, you know, he's still not sitting very well and and he's kind of uncomfortable about some about all that. Any other concerns? Yes? Trish. Yes. Uh, Chance's grandmother was telling us that uh, her nephew was killed in Mexico this past week. Someone, uh, he had 
sponsored a soccer team and they're going to a, a tournament mm -hmm. in Mexico and he had been abducted and uh, was killed. Oh, that's awful. And uh, so, as a gift, not that he's but they did find who had his cell phone. Yeah. So, that's uh, true. Yeah, I mean, they know what uh, I tell you, sometimes this world, you wonder where it's going to and coming from. Oh, it's just 45 or so. That is what I'm saying. I understand also that the devastation out of the El Reno was pretty bad. Yes. Not only out that way, but also a friend's in the, wherever it was. Anyway, it's just an awful place off the highway. Yeah. I yeah. uh, also heard that the man that um, invented whatever this thing is that tracks the, the velocity mm -hmm. of the wind. Mm -hmm. And his son and another man were out in that area, and they worked, worked for Discovery, and they were killed. Oh. oh, I hate to hear that. I did hear that there was a drowning because of all the flooding. So, you know, it's, the danger wasn't all from the tornadoes and the winds. It was mm -hmm. also with the water this time. Okay, anyone else? Chris and Sally did have uh, some damage this time. Did they? Uh, a tree, a down tree, and took out their back fence. But I don't, I, you know, I mean, minor compared to what everybody else has suffered. But they did have some. Okay, I did not know that. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Yes. Um, also, to remember, I, I have a friend that was in the Tinker Bank and more. And uh, she came out all right and safe, but she's had a lot, especially after all these tornadoes yeah. still springing up, she's had a lot of emotional problems dealing with it and, and her fear and stuff. Oh, so yeah. just yeah. kind of remember everybody in their, you know, post-traumatic. Everybody's a little bit jumpy right now. You know, it's come too close, and for some it's come way too close. And also, so. um, I had a friend that lives in the home that was not deemed as a total loss and so one of those they don't feel that it's safe to repair it but that's yes. what the insurance company does so yeah just lift those people up in their confusion and, and decision making that's those. really a tough thing I know the nurse that uh, gives Jill her allergy shots lost her father in the one at Steelman Estates it, it, it was uh, the man that was in the paper this morning and talked about him, Glenn Irish. So if you'd remember Terry DeMoss and her family. Okay, why don't we go to the Lord with our concerns? Thank you, Lord, that through all of this excitement and all of this trauma of the storms these past weeks, you have been with each of us, and you have been with the people who lost their homes and who lost loved ones. Without you, it would be very difficult to get through the trying times. And thank you, Lord, for your people who step up when things bad and happen, and they're there to help. And they're there to help people put their lives back together. We thank you for all the blessings that you've given us. And we pray that you'll help us to share them with others. Please bless Pastor Chris as he's working at recovering from this surgery. Please let his healing go well and his treatments go well. So that he will be strong again and be able to return to us. Please bless Sally as she's helping Chris get over all of this. And give her your strength, Lord, and help her to know the, how to do the things that she needs to do for Chris. We pray, Lord, for not only for the people here that have lost homes and businesses and, and family members, but the ones around the world who from war and from natural disasters have lost everything that they've had. We pray, Lord, that as your people, 
we will be able to share our blessings with them and help them to know that you are important to us and that you should be important to them. We pray that you'll bless our troops and our agents all around the world, Lord, and that you'll watch over them and keep them safe and keep them well as they do the work to keep us free. We pray that you will go with us this next week. Everywhere we need to be there for someone, please help us to be, know and help give us the words and the actions that you want us to, to pass on to others. We pray, Lord, in, in the, with the words of Jesus Christ in his holy name, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine art the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Our hymn of praise this morning is His Name is Wonderful on page 174 if you'd like to stand and sing right along with us. We'll do it twice.
for our scripture readings this morning, first from the Old Testament, the book of Psalms. Psalm 63, verses 1 through 4, and you'll find that beginning on page 409. O God, you are my God, I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. For our New Testament scripture this morning, we'll be reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 7. And verses 37 through 44, and you'll find that on page 76. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, Out of the believer's heart shall flow waters, rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no Spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. When they heard these words, some in the crowd said, This is really the prophet. Others said, This is the Messiah. But some asked, Surely the Messiah does not come from Galilee, does he? Has not the Scripture said that the Messiah is descended from David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David lived. So there was a division in the crowd because of him. Some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. The word of God for the children of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. In this scripture, the Jewish people are celebrating the Feast of Booths, or sometimes called the Feast of Tabernacles. It's a Jewish festival that happened on the 15th day of the seventh month of the Jewish calendar, which is sometime in September or October on our calendar. And it was right after they finished harvesting the corn and the grapes. For seven days, the priests and the people offered up burnt sacrifices of multiple calves as they prayed for the 70 known nations of their world. Each day after the burnt offerings, the people were led by the priest to the, the fountain of Siloam, and the priests would draw out a vessel of water in a, in a golden vessel. Then with much singing and trumpet blowing and celebrating, they would return to the altar and the priest would pour the water out over the burnt offering. This was done to remember the water from the rock that God gave them when they were wandering in the wilderness. And it also represented their hope of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that would be theirs when their Messiah came. Now the last day, the eighth day, often called the great day, had arrived. It was a holy day, a Sabbath day to them, with much celebrating and, and much ceremony. On this eighth day, they only offered up one calf, and the prayers for, on this day were only for the Jewish people. It was... They also offered up prayers at, on this day for the coming rains of the, this, the coming year. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was during this pouring of the water over the burnt sacrifice that most likely was the time when Jesus stood up and shouted, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me. 
Let the one who believes in me drink, as the scripture has said. Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Water that was in motion was considered to be living water to the Jewish people. It had been said in the scriptures that the coming Holy Spirit would flow over them like living water. But here the Holy the but here the Holy Spirit was being offered not just to the Jews in this invitation, but to anyone who believed and wanted it. To anyone who had strong desires for spiritual blessings. Believe in Jesus and the promise of the coming Holy Spirit was theirs. At this point, it was just a promise to the people because the Spirit wasn't yet available to everyone or anyone because Jesus had not been glorified. He had not yet given up his body in the crucifixion so that our sins are forgiven and that we might have eternal life. But here they were offered a promise that was fulfilled later on the day of Pentecost. Jesus not only promised the Holy Spirit, but he said, Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Matthew Henry said in his commentary on this scripture passage, The Spirit dwelling and working in believers is as, a, is as of a fountain of living water, running water, out of which plentiful streams flow. Cooling and cleansing is water. You cannot keep living water only for yourself. As the Holy Spirit works in your life, you are filled with such blessings that they overflow you and need to be shared with others. Your whole attitude, the way you treat others, will be colored with the love of God. As Matthew Henry again said, these streams of living water have flowed from our glorified Redeemer down to this age and to the remote corners of the earth. May we be anxious to make them known to others. Believers shall have the comfort, not of a vessel of water fetched from a pool, but of a river flowing from themselves. After years of the Jews hoping and praying for the coming of the Messiah and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, a man stood up among them and shouted an invitation to them to receive living water from him. Here was a man rumored to be the Messiah making a public announcement and one, giving one last chance at eternal life for many of them. For some of them would pass away before the next gathering of Jews. The reaction of the people was divided. Some said, this is really the prophet. They were referring to the prophet that the scripture said would come before the Messiah. Others said, this is the Messiah. Some did not listen to Jesus, and others were angry and wanted him to be arrested. They believed that such sacrilege of, of presenting oneself as the Messiah should not be treated lightly and should not be tolerated. He should be arrested and dealt with according to the law, death by crucifixion. Others asked, Surely the Messiah does not come from Galilee, does he? Has not the scripture said that the Messiah is descended from David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David, was, where David lived. Most of the people seem to be unaware of Jesus' lineage and birthplace. Certainly the Messiah came from Galilee and was descended from David and was also from Bethlehem, the place of his birth. These days, birth dates and, lim and lineages are easy to find on the computers. Not much is private anymore for any of us. But back then, it required much research and much travel to confirm matters of one's birthplace and lineage. The chief priests may have known 
of Jesus' lineage and birthplace, but if they did, they weren't telling. Jesus was not the kind of Messiah that they wanted. They wanted him arrested. The temple police reported back to the chief uh, priests and Pharisees that they had not arrested Jesus. That when asked why they had not arrested him, they said, never has anyone spoken like this. The Pharisees looked at them and said, surely you have not been deceived at the have you? God had not allowed Jesus to be arrested at th that time because the time for his glorification, his death, resurrection, and returning to the Father had not yet come. The people of Oklahoma have been dealing with a lot of water, water in motion these past few weeks. Rivers are full to overflowing, streets are flooding, the ground and destruction from the tornadoes have been saturated with water. That's not the kind of living water we're talking about. Come to Jesus and believe in him. Listen to the small voice within you that guides you, comforts you, and instructs you. The Holy Spirit may not come to you in a blaze of glory, but it will come to you. Jesus promised. Are the changes the Spirit makes in your life worth having? Oh, yes. Not only for the good you do in sharing it with others, but also for the promise of eternal life. Thank you, God, for your presence in our lives as Father, as Son, and as Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our hymn of commitment today is found on page 472. the Holy Spirit to hit the urgings and the guiding of him. I pray that as you are filled with God's peace and God's love, with God's instruction, that you will let the living water flow out of you and touch everyone around you, showing them by your actions, by your words, by your deeds, that we belong to Jesus and Jesus is our all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> 